Coming up on Oakdale Update, we'll learn how to be dementia friendly. We'll preview some upcoming events in the city and we'll go snowshoeing at the Oakdale Nature Preserve. Stay tuned, Oakdale Update is straight ahead. Welcome to Oakdale Update. I'm your host, Frank Arcello. This is the City of Oakdale's news and information program about your community. Family Means is a nonprofit agency in Stillwater that provides education, counseling, and support services sought by individuals and families as they face changing and challenging times in their lives. Today I'm joined by Sarah Gavin from Family Means to learn how to be dementia friendly. Sarah, thanks for joining us on Oakdale Update. It's my pleasure. So give us a little bit about your background, okay? Sure, I am a licensed social worker with the state of Minnesota. I have mm -hmm. a degree in social work. Mm -hmm. The state of Minnesota has multiple certificates for somebody in my position. So I am a caregiver coach and I am a dementia capable social worker. Very good. Okay, now uh, we're talking about uh, the Stillwater Action Team, ACT. Could you tell us what that's all about, and is it just a Stillwater area? Well, I'll give you a bit of background. So then 2014, Stillwater as a community came together to discuss what it needed to do to be dementia friendly. There were a lot of things that Stillwater was doing well, but we recognized in 2014 that there were gaps in services that needed to be filled. Stillwater's Act on Alzheimer is a collaboration by members of the community to recognize those gaps and come up with action plans to fill those. Okay, why did Stillwater do this? Why didn't uh, somebody else, I mean, uh, Oakdale or whatever, how, why, how did Stillwater get involved in this? Stillwater just came forward on their own. Each community can do that in Minnesota. Thanks to some legislation that started in 2009, there are programs and policies that are available. Any community can access them when they want to. Um, if you go to actonalzheimers.org, there is a list of cities throughout the state of Minnesota and what each city is doing to be act on Alzheimer's. Okay, so you, uh, it's called Stillwater Act, but it, truly you're, you're all Washington County, correct? Washington County is something that has different acts on Alzheimer's. Stillwater's is accessible to members of the Stillwater community. Family Means as an agency is available to those that are in Washington County. Okay, so you deal with Alzheimer's and dementia. What is the difference? Is there a difference? Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. So dementia is the higher diagnosis. And then within dementia, there are right now, roughly science estimates over 50 different kinds of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most popular kind of dementia. Um, okay, so my understanding from what I've seen on TV and, and this sort of thing is uh, that after you're dead, if you have Alzheimer's, they go into your brain and they can see plaque or something in there, right? Through an autopsy. Yes, through yep. an autopsy. So what, what is that? Uh, what is dementia and Alzheimer's? Is there a difference in that respect? There. There is. There are many different kinds of dementia and they present through the body in different ways. The brain changes depending on the different kind of dementia that you have. Okay. So um, there's a form of dementia known as frontal temporal dementia and you'll see changes in that frontal lobe of the brain that would be visible through scans and maybe a biopsy. So you can check that out before you have to go in and Yes, you no longer wait until after death. Okay, what about Alzheimer's too? Is that another one that you can t uh, tell ahead of time? Uh, and what's the procedure there? There are many markers for Alzheimer's disease, just as there's all, uh, markers for the other dementias that are out there. If somebody is going to be diagnosed, it's important to know that the neurology department at wherever they doctor 
is prepared to work with them through the testing. They're going to do scans, there's going to be cognitive testing, and there's potentially going to be blood work. But through all of those, they come up with an idea of what's changing in the brain, and from there they diagnose which of the dementias is present. Okay, so what do they do about it? What can you do about it? Right. In a medical sense, I guess. Can you get a shot of something that would help you? or what? There is no cure right now for okay. dementia. No. What my goal would be as a dementia navigator, as a social worker, my goal would be to help the family cope with the emotions related to finding out that's the diagnosis mm -hmm. and then come up with a game plan as what it will take to make the future better for them. Okay. That's a, that was my next question about the navigation. Can you get into that a little bit more? Yeah, so the Dementia Navigator is a specific product that came from Stillwater's Act on Alzheimer's. Again, Stillwater recognized that there was need for a neutral party to be accessible by residents, somebody that could talk with them through the supports that were present in the community where they live, and come up with an action plan. So my role as a Dementia Navigator is first and foremost to listen to the families, hear what's going on, help them solve what's going on right now, and then think forward because the disease will change the person they love and they need to be prepared for those next steps. How, how long a period do we have for these people? They come to you and then you, they know something is not right and then how, how much time do they have usually? With me. With, with their, with their uh, loved one. Years. Could be years. Could be years. And it, it's an uh, insidious disease. Too. Well, it keeps it, a lot of people are going in earlier now because the science behind diagnosing dementia has gotten stronger over the years. So at this point, many families go in in the early stage, and there are medications that can help change the course of how quickly does the disease of dementia progresses. It can't stop it yet, but mm -hmm. we can try to slow it down. We have some tools to work with that. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea would be that we work with them in the early stage to discuss what's coming down the road, make those decisions now while somebody who has the diagnosis can participate in the conversation oh, wow. and contribute what their goals are, what their needs will be, they'll be able to say kind of, don't do this, do do that for me. Oh. Which is huge. Tough decisions to make, aren't they? It's a gift though to your loved ones. It's a gift to your kids, to your spouse, to whoever is taking care of you, to look at them and say, this is what I'd want if the situation changes. Mm. It's scary. It is scary. It can be scary. And I'm, I'm reckoning that uh, because the population is getting older and mm -hmm. living longer, I'm sure that you're busier than heck, aren't you? I have a very busy job and I love every minute of it. Well, I'm sure. Oh, that's good. All right, so um, in your brochure too, you have a, 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 something in there co called Coalition of Volunteers. And what does that mean, oh, these, these volunteers? What does that mean? The volunteer piece that you see within that brochure, and that's the brochure from the Stillwater Act on Alzheimer's, um, that just recognizes that Stillwater's Act team is not just healthcare professionals. It's members of the community, business owners, uh, people that work at the banks in town. We talk to the grocery stores. We talk with EMS, the fire department, and the police department within Stillwater. Again, Stillwater's Act on Alzheimer's team is a coalition of volunteers that are all involved with the day-to-day -day life that Stillwater residents are living. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? If somebody comes into the bank and the bank teller tell, can tell that things aren't quite right with this person. So what, they could contact you, they could contact you, or so, their loved ones or something. So Stillwater Act has a dementia education training meant for businesses throughout oh. Stillwater. So our community educator, Jenny West, is going out and working with businesses within Stillwater and Oak Park Heights to em explore with the employees situations that they've come up against where they've, they're have they pretty sure dementia was making that encounter difficult and train those employees to be dementia friendly so that they can continue to assist the people of Stillwater with living in the community regardless of dementia. So can they tell too if uh, a loved one is uh, not treating this person in the correct manner, knowing that there's dementia there and these, this they, person is being mean or cruel or, or who knows what, yes. stealing their funds or can they, do you go into that too? We do touch on kind of contacts in the community too discuss those situations, talk them through. Uh, you never want to accuse somebody who's wrongfully 
uh, or who is rightfully doing what they should do. But if somebody is a vulnerable adult and they are being abused, neglected, or exploited, it's important, important to access the resources that we have for that, for mm -hmm. protecting them. A lot of times people are being abusive to older people in the first place, and then I've sold if they're dementia, it's probably even worse, correct? Or could be worse, It right? definitely makes them more vulnerable. And what do you do about that in the legal sense? Do you call the coppers, or do you, what do you do? Minnesota has a common, um, it's called the MARC line, the Minnesota Adult Abuse Reporting Center. And there's a toll-free phone number that anybody in the state of Minnesota can call to make a report. Okay, and <clears throat> is it pursued? Does somebody follow through on that? I believe so. You don't know? No, I, I, in cases <laughs> where I've had to make reports, they've, there are the ones that needed to be investigated were investigated. No matter what, every report is taken and filed appropriately, and in the future, if future concerns come forward, it, they build the case. Okay, that's good to hear, isn't it? I it mean, is. That could get kind of serious. Well, with the news, <coughs> the Star Tribune articles that came out recently uh, about abuse with seniors, it's, it's a very hot topic, as it should be. We should be looking out for these people's, the people of our community that are vulnerable. Sure, now do you deal with uh, nursing homes and that kind of thing? Do I personally? Well, does your group do yes, you deal? Yes, yep. in, in what respect, what do you do? Well, we, um, if anybody from the nursing homes wants to talk about a trend that they see in Stillwater that needs to be addressed, the Act on Alzheimer's could be a kind of a platform to bring it to, to talk it through. Mm -hmm. Do you go to, uh, say, Boutwell Landing and places like that and talk to the staff there to, so that they're aware of what's going on? I'm sure they are anyway, though, aren't they? I mean, that's their business. Yeah, as a as a um, as an assisted living setting, as a health campus, which they are, they have their own expectations because of their licensure. But we are out there doing education with even the residents okay. of Boutwells, so that they prepare for it if they have to. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> um, okay. So, in your office, what do you and your, and your people do, and how many are in your office, and what exactly do you do? on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a good chance for me to talk about Family Means. So sure. Family Means, like you said, is a nonprofit. Uh, we're based out of Stillwater, Minnesota, but we service all of Washington County. We have uh, a program called Financial Solutions that helps people with their financial challenges, which there are a lot of financial challenges, student loan debt, credit card debt, you name it. Um, they work with them to create answers and help them address their financial needs. Mm -hmm. We have a mental health program that's quite broad and diverse. They do a fantastic job throughout Western Wisconsin and then this East Metro. And then my program is Caregiver Support and Aging Services. And our role is to work with families, regardless of where they are on the age spectrum, to come up with supports and resources to make their life better every day. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work, isn't it? It is a lot of work. We're a wonderful agency. <laughs> well, how many people do you have in your office? <clears throat> Ooh, that's a good question. Under 100, I believe. Really? Where are you located? Uh, 1875 Northwestern Avenue South in Stillwater, Minnesota. Where, I don't know where that is. Is that a, about? <coughs> if you can find the big blue water tower by Herbergers, you're very close to oh, us. Oh, is that right? Up mm -hmm. in the center up there, in that area, huh? Yep, right off Highway 36. Oh, good deal. All right, so now we have... Uh, uh, the different Alzheimer's and dementia. Yep. You want to tell us what are some of the signs of Alzheimer's? If you, if my um, parent, I'm looking at my parents. What am I looking for? A good summary that I like to give families is to think long term. Think backwards about how that person has changed over time. Dementia is a collection of symptoms that has changed this person. Swift changes day to day are typically not dementia, but over time, dementia will change a person's personality. It changes their ability to make the decisions that they've always made, and it strips them of their memory. Mm -hmm. And then that's both of them, Alzheimer's and dementia, yes. right? Yep. Okay, so um, just as an aside there, I had an aunt. She was the most wonderful lady in the world, and she got Alzheimer's, and she became the meanest person I'm just, I feel so bad about that, but she just got worse and worse and swearing and I mean, she was just awful. So what do you, what do you think of that? Well, that's not something um, that you would have seen coming, right? But over time, she went from being a sweet person to being somebody that was, sounds quite challenging. Mm -hmm. that, that was the dementia, that was, that dementia changed her brain and changed who she was. 
and made her vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, whatever supports she received from the family and whatever paid providers they had were necessary to keep her going day to day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so some, what are some of the signs that a person family should be looking for, and I know you touched on some of it, but you want, can you get a little bit more detail? Sure. Um, well, a big one, now if I was retired and I didn't know the day of the week, that that's normal to a degree, but if I don't know what month we're in, if I don't know the season, if I don't know the year, that's concerning and that's definitely a symptom of dementia. Um, familiar tasks, suddenly a task that I've been doing for years and I've always done it the same way, I can't do it beginning to end anymore. Mm -hmm. That's probably dementia. Excuse me, does that, does that come and go? I mean, can you say, well, today I, I just couldn't make that cup of coffee or pot of coffee, but then tomorrow I can do it. Is that usual? Is that happen? At a certain stage of dementia, yes. It yep. does. It comes and goes. And that's what makes it hard to recognize that it's something consistently mm -hmm. happening. In my role as a dementia navigator, I would talk with you about those symptoms and how common they are to discuss whether or not it is a dementia or maybe it's something else. But oftentimes it's, it's a dementia slowly mm -hmm. presenting. Okay, so continue there with some of the other uh, things, let's see, uh, understanding visual images and what? That, um, when it lists that as a symptom, um, there are changes in the way the brain perceives the space around us. So for instance, if I was reaching for a cup of coffee, I might drink it and then go to set it down on the countertop and my brain misunderstands the distance between myself, that cup of coffee and the countertop, and I might drop it to the floor oh. rather than setting it on the countertop. Oh, okay. And what else we have uh, misplacing things and losing ability to, that okay okay I want to I'll read that one Mis misplacing things and losing the ability to, to retrace steps sure misplacing things I think we're all guilty of that aren't we I mean it's pretty common it is pretty common <laughs> stress can make it hard for us to keep track of things sure but retracing if I walk out of a room and forget why I came in if I go back and start over and and retrace my steps, that's normal. Mm -hmm. But if I go back into the previous room and I forget that I was in the other room, mm -hmm. that's not normal. Ooh, I do that a lot. I go back and I have to rethink of what I'm doing. So, yes. But that's kind of normal then, huh? To a degree, to <laughs> a degree. With all of dementia, there are stages to this. And when it's severe enough to interrupt with your ability to live alone or safely, that's when we have to have concerns for your well-being. Mm -hmm. Okay, now withdrawal uh, from work or social activities. That's a pretty serious one, isn't it? It is a big one. One of the biggest conversations I have as a dementia navigator is keeping somebody social. Socialization is one of those skills. Uh, they say if you don't use it, you will lose it. Yes. And thankfully here in that East Metro area, we have a plethora of resources for that. There are group respite opportunities. We have adult day. There are community centers. There's lots of ways to get out and stay social. Mm -hmm. We just have to figure out what's the right fit for each mm -hmm. family. There was just an article in the paper recently about that and how social is so important it to is. keeping your brain going and to keeping you happy and, mm -hmm. right? Is that mm -hmm. correct? Just being with others, that, that human contact makes a big difference and it improves our mood. Yes. Okay, so uh, I know uh, changes in mood and regular personality, what's that one all about? Well, because the brain as an organ is changing because of the dementia, our ability to handle our emotions and, and um, be the person we were before changes. So mood can fluctuate, we might be severely depressed, um, and those are symptoms that definitely are worthy of evaluating. A neurology department would determine whether or not it's a result of the dementia or if it was just a pre-existing depression. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's one that uh, confusion with time and place. Now, I own a barbershop and I, I work on appointments and there are certain clients of mine who call three or four times making an appointment for mm -hmm. the same day or they make the appointment and they forget. Uh, they say, I can't find the paper I wrote it down on and or when was that again? So I, I'm seeing it. Is there anything I'm supposed to be doing about that? Generally speaking, they have mates that are still taking care of them, but uh, I can see it. I, it's And it's happening a lot too as my clientele gets older. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a business, that would be something, you're probably seeing it in other ways too, uh, having that conversation with you about you know, reminder cards or even reminder phone calls yes. might reduce that. It does. It does, but then they misplace the, the reminders that I give them. True. So, but that's, uh, I mean, I've learned to live with it, and if they don't show up, I understand, you know, usually. Okay, so uh, 
what are the costs of all this? I mean, once you get somebody going and maybe, you know, into a nursing home or whatever, what's the cost? Well, let's start with my role as a dementia navigator. So there's three dementia navigators through ACT on Alzheimer's Stillwater. Uh, depending on the three of us, um, our costs are typically based on how much time you need with us. Again, my name is Sarah Gavin, and then Sarah Adams is another dementia navigator. We are both at Family Means, and our costs are something that are available to families on a sliding scale. Valerie Richards is the third dementia navigator, and her costs are based on a package of service that you would like to access. Mm -hmm. As you progress into other services that are not Valerie's or um, through family means, we would talk with you about those costs up front so you have a rough idea of what is needed and what you can afford. You think it through before just jumping into a contract that you may or may not be able to afford long term. So at that stage you're talking about going into a nursing home or something like that? Yeah, we would talk with you about the cost of long term care. Mm -hmm. Yep, cost of assisted living versus a nursing home, memory care, and then there's staying home with services, which is a, a different way to do it, but it does work and mm -hmm. many people are doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple customers who do that too, where in order for the man to come in and get a haircut, he waits till somebody comes to the house and it's a good chance for them to get away too. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a, on a day to day to day to day basis with the loved one who has dementia. And, uh, I like that idea. You're yes. giving him a break and letting Absolutely. him get out and do the things that make him him. Absolutely, that is so important. All right, so we're running out of time here, but if uh, if anybody is interested in your organization there, do uh, you have the phone? No, you don't have the phone number offhand, but. How, who do they get a hold of? Well, you can get a hold of myself, Sarah Gavin, or Sarah Adams. We're both at Family Means. Or you could get a hold of Valerie Richards. She is also a dementia navigator. Okay. And there, our contact information can be provided. Okay. Very good. Sarah, that was wonderful. And it's uh, we sure learned a lot about this. And it's a terrible thing to have happen. And do you get a little depressed doing this kind of business? I, mean, I don't, actually. No, I enjoy my job. I like working with families and seeing them get to a place where there's calm mm -hmm. and they have a rough idea of what's coming. Education instills confidence in families. And we don't know when things are going to change, but we know roughly what the journey ahead will be. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy helping families figure out what their individual journey will be. Just as a general rule, if there is such a thing, how long, once you diagnose Alzheimer's, let's say, how long a, how long does it take for it to take the person, if you will? Take Well, that really depends on when they're diagnosed, but I would say roughly eight to 10 years. Eight to 10 years. That, for Alzheimer's, that's an average. Oh, that's a long time. We can find moments of joy on all eight to 10 <laughs> I'm years. I'm sure, I'm sure. All right, Sarah, thank you ever so much for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Okay. It's time for a short break. We'll be right back with more of Oakdale Update in just a minute. It's the most natural thing for me to dance, but I was tripping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. Welcome back to Oakdale Update. Did you know that you can rent snowshoes at the Discovery Center to trek around the Oakdale Nature Preserve? Here's a look at what the Discovery Center has to offer during the winter. It's our hidden gem, 220 acres of, of trails, paved and grass trails. Um, people come out and in the summer obviously bike ride, walk the trails, run. Um, in the winter, snowshoe, cross country ski. family activity gets you out in the winter. Sometimes people have a hard time finding things to do and enjoy in the winter, but this is a fun activity where we get people out and discover the Oakdale Nature Preserve. It's 
stop by the Discovery Center. We have a display room that's open um, business hours, 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, also on the weekend hours. And kids can come in and we have plaster pods, different activities, um, touch tables, puzzles, lots of different fun things that'll keep them busy in the, in the winter months. We've got trail maps as well that you can look at and they'll kind of help you navigate the park as well. Lots of wildlife, lots of deer, and lots of birds. Check it out, give us a call, stop in. Only $5 to rent the skis. We've got sizes for adults and kids. Um, so it would be a great opportunity to come out and get outside. We're almost out of time on this month's Oakdale update, but first here are some upcoming events. The indoor garage sale takes place on Saturday, March 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Discovery Center at 4444 Hadley Avenue North. This community event is fun for collectors, families, and bargain hunters alike. You'll find everything from children's clothing and toys to housewares, collectibles, books, and much more. The next day on Sunday, March 11th, is the Making Maple Syrup event at the Discovery Center from 1 to 3 p.m. The cost is $5 per person. Register by March 5th at oakdalefun.com. The annual mystery egg hunt is on March 31st at the Discovery Center from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The cost is $11 per child up to the age of 10. Register by March 23rd at oakdalefun.com. And finally, there's a road trip for seniors on March 22nd to see the life of Frank Sinatra at the Ives Auditorium in Bloomington. More information is at oakdalefun.com. That's all we have time for this month on Oakdale Update. For everyone at the City of Oakdale, thanks for watching.